having issues. As I say, you know, I'm a novice knife maker, um, and I've been having issues. I had a piece of angle, which was aluminium, which I was using as a knife jig, and I was getting issues with inconsistent grind. Now, after a lot of head scratching, I sussed what it was, and all it was was that the angle wasn't straight. When you actually put it against a straight edge, you could see there was a very slight variation in it. So of course, when you were turning the knife around and going back in a different way, I was getting issues. So yesterday, I thought what I'll do is just go back to basics. So what I did, I got myself a piece of wood, and on the bandsaw, obviously you can adjust the bed. You can adjust the angle of the bed. I adjusted the angle to 10 degrees, which 10 degrees each side is going to be a 20, 20 degree grind, and made myself a little basic jig. And the results are fantastic, I'll show you. Oh, sorry. As you can see, if I come into it, look. Fantastic grinds, really, really pleased with that. That's a primary grind. So I do apologize, because I did this last night and I didn't film it. Um, but I don't take any more off, because if I do, I'm gonna have issues with heat treating. This is for the Bearded Chef. Um, you may be interested in this. This one here, later on today, I'll maybe try and film this as well. I'm gonna set up a, a wooden jig for this as well. Now with this one, obviously because of the, the shape of it and it being a chef's knife as such, I want a very, very shallow grind. So I'm probably looking at about four degrees on that, I should imagine. Um, yeah, about, about a four degree grind either side on that, which would give me eight. There may even be too much. I'll test it on a piece of metal first before I use this. And then I'll put this on, finish it off. It's a shame because I quite like the heat treated color there. It looks really quite nice. But you can see it, it, it heat treated very well. Um, and this was 1080. Um, right, heat treat. We'll do a heat treat on this one in a minute. I'll get the forward set up. Hopefully it's not gonna rain. And we can, um, I'll show you what I do. Now this is 1080 still. Now with 1080, it's a little bit of a different animal in regard to heat treating. Um, the early blades I was using was 1070, which is a much simpler heat treat method. Um, basically with 1070, you heat it to, I think between 80 and 840, I'll have to double check that, degrees. And then once it's at the temperature non-magnetic, obviously, you then quench, which I use um, canola oil. And for all UK, UK guys, canola oil is just rapeseed oil. I didn't, didn't realize that until I looked it up. Um, and that's it. Now with 1080, it's a little bit different you start getting into the realms where you need to soak the steel. Um, that's the terminology for keeping it at a set temperature for a certain amount of time. I've come up with a system by using my forge, whereby I can monitor the temperature and keep it within about 10 degrees. And I think that's more than enough. Right guys, this is how I've got it set up. Um, block off as much forge as I can so that I'm keeping the heat in as much as I can. This is my thermocouple and I bought this off of eBay, I think it was, which has obviously got ceramic surround in it, which makes it, um, you know, more resistant to higher temperatures. And as you can see, I've got a metal tube. Now, the reason I've got that is if I just put the thermocouple in there and turned on the torch, it's going to read a much higher temperature because it's within the flame. It's not going to be an accurate temperature of what the forge is. So by putting it in here and letting the forge heat up slowly, I can get a better idea of where the forge temperature is. Now, when I've got the forge temperature up to range, I can then put my knife in, which I'll put it in like that, so it's out of the direct flame of the forge. That will heat up slowly to the desired temperature, which obviously I monitor on here. And as you can see, it's 17.3 degrees or 17.1, and this is bloody accurate. I've checked this with boiling water, freezing cold, all that stuff, and it is dead on. So that's how you do that. So, that's it. All that is, that's my oil, right? And the reason I've got this, this improvised lid, is in case we get any issues with flashing or whatever like that, I can just sort it out. So the range I've got a um, heat treat this is between 840 and 880 and as you can see you know we've got a pretty damn stable temperature there um, and all I'll do is I'll, I'll reduce the airflow in a minute make it more gas rich and that will just, just slow it down even more so as you can see it works perfectly right 
Alright guys, as you can see, if I zoom in a bit, the knife's warming up lovely. And our temperature is climbing up slowly. I want it about 840. So I'm just letting it go up nice and slowly and then we'll hold it for 10 minutes and then we'll quench. What I'm gonna do now guys is I've got a bit of steel, so I'm gonna put that in there to heat up so that when I do the um sorry, when I do the, the quenching. I've got warmer oil. You want it around, I think it's about 50 degrees, so uh, you know, just hot enough that you can touch it, but it's hot. And that's ideal, because that speeds up the, uh, the speed of the quench. So, there we go. All right, guys, I don't know if you can see that, but I've, um, I've reduced the, the air intake now quite a lot, and you can see we're getting a, I think they call it dragon's breath coming out. But our temperature's at about 850, which is roughly what I want. I want it between 840 and 880, so we're in the middle. And as you can see, like you know, we've got hardly any variation in temperature. You can see that the knife's, you know, if I, if I zoom in a bit, you can see that the knife's nice and red. I don't know if that's if that's actually focused or not, but you know, it's working really well. And you can see it's hardly moving, and I can adjust it any way I want. So in my mind, that's pretty, pretty damn bloody perfect for me, and it saved me having the expense of buying a kiln at the stage. You know, so there we are. Right, see you later. All right, guys, there you go. Um, let's get it oh, still hot. Um, the blade is is nice and flat. There's not hardly, you know, there's hardly any scale on it. Just kind of wipes off. So that's what leads me to believe that that is a correct process. And obviously, everyone wants to see this because it's on force and fire. You can hear it, right? But that's nice and hard. Yep, so there we are guys. Heat treated, then we'll do a final grind on it, clean up the knife, put the handles on, and there we go. So thanks for that. I'll do a part three with the, the handles and everything because it takes a while, and I'll speak to you guys later, bye bye. Obviously the one thing I didn't show is your tempering. Um, I'm going to now put this in here for two hours at 200 degrees and that will give me a Rockwell of about 60 and it should be a nice golden colour as we know. See you later guys, bye.